series of challenges to prove that big boobs can mean big brains. In game show Clever vs Stupid, that's after we celebrate the return of Sam Mitchell to EastEnders. Some things change, some things stay the same. But for Samantha Mitchell, Albert Square will always be home. There's no place like home. Daniela Westbrook is back as Sam Mitchell. And today is the first time she has set foot on the EastEnders lot in nearly a decade. Whenever anyone asks me about EastEnders in the time that I've been in it or been out of it, when you walk back into the square, it just feels right. I've changed a lot in the last 10 years. I find it a lot harder to play Sam because I'm not the kid that I was. I'm a very different person. My life is very different to Sam's life. Thank God. The scenes we're just about to film now is Sam trying to get away. She's desperate, she doesn't want to go back in prison, she doesn't want to get arrested, and she's scared, and she'll do anything and use anyone to get out. That's the mirror you're going to look into when you spot the policeman in the mirror. OK, so walking up that way. Then you, then you get out, take your shoes off, yep. um, and, and run towards the tube. Thank you. OK, here we go then. And action! From the beginning of this first week with her back, there is the threat of prison. And the Mitchells know that. Sam's kind of pushing it away and trying not to think about it and pretending it'll never happen. She wasn't implicated in the death of Den, but she certainly perverted the course of justice. She wasn't entirely straight, and then she legged it as well. As soon as she stepped off that plane, uh, it was a matter of time before the law would catch up with her. She's a fantasist where she thinks, it's fine, I'm a Mitchell. Hey, are you Samantha Mitchell? No, 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 no! And then when she's arrested screaming, crying out of the station, she just wants Phil to make it better and he just can't. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. At that moment, it's a huge realisation, probably the first time in her life, where she just thinks, actually, no one can make this better. <laughs> Please help me, Phil! Don't let him save me, please, Phil! <laughs> Oh, how life has changed for Sam Mitchell since this sweet little princess first appeared on our screens almost 20 years ago. She is the original Sam Mitchell, go back from when I was growing up. Daniel Westbrook is Sam Mitchell, and I've seen her as this brown-faced little girl who first came into the show and was the, the missing Mitchell part. Ricky, is it Sam? I know who she is. Mitchell. What? She's our kid's sister. Sam is definitely the, the, the rules between the, the two Mitchell Thorns team, between Phil and Grant, and they're kind of looming over at all times. If we feel you're going more loopy over someone, we're bound to feel a bit protective. I mean, that's his age. They're gonna what are they going to expect? You know, things. Grant, we're talking Arthur Shandy in the big. Not a mad, passionate sex session in a secret love nest. She's a mad leader. 
she was the prettiest one of the Mitchells. I mean, if you look at the two brothers there, and, and Billy, I mean, they're all a bit ugo. Oh, look really horrible. Turn around and get a look. Oh, yeah, lovely. So I always thought that, uh, that Sam was adopted because she was far more intelligent and prettier than the, the rest of the family. You all think I'm too young to go to Ricky, don't you? I didn't say that, and I also said we'll talk about this later, didn't I? Yeah, this is better. She's this coquettish little nymphette. She can get any man, but she usually picks the wrong man. Do you know, you're really nice. You're not so bad yourself. You know, she can't resist the lure of grimy Walford. No matter if she's at the Copacabana bar or whatever, it's still not quite as good as the Queen Vic. We've uh, got a little sight for you. Oh, yeah. Sounds like trouble. Hello, Mum. But at the end of the day, she needs that security and love of her family. She needs the Mitchells, and that's why she's a girl whose heart belongs in Walford. Hello, Mum. 2009 Sam has elements of old Sam. Still selling tat down the market? No, I work in the cafe, actually. Oh, moving up in the world. Elements of the in-between Sam. Minty, how are you? Sam, how... Well, don't just stand there. On a four, I'll see you again. Well, the audience will see is a, a mix of the two, but we wanted to see a bit more of the fun. Oi! Ronnie! It's me, Sam! <laughs> and so to throw in with, with all our current characters and people remembering her from the past, but also people kind of trying to work out, has she changed? Oh, OK, no, she hasn't. Oh, no, she's worse. Here, yeah, darling, present for you. Right, should we get this party started, then? <laughs> no. Sam, feel what I meant. Everybody likes to think that when they go away, that they come out, oh, I'm changed and I'm different, but I don't think she is. I think she's a bit mouth there. Your sister's not exactly Pigtails and Laura Ashley. You earn all that yourself, love. The Sam we've seen now is strident, confident, wearing garish colours, suntan, hair up. Plenty of lippy and plenty of lip. Careful, you're gonna crack me ribs. It's been quite a roller coaster for her as her first week, but as it unravels, you'll see she's not the cow that everybody thinks she is. <laughs> so this is Bridge Street. It's where the action happens, where the market is. When I first ever came here, it was a lot smaller. Pauline was in the laundry up with Dot, and obviously the calf is all different because it used to belong to Kathy. This never changes because it is the whole hub of the square. It's the Queen Vic, where all the action happens. I remember Letitia Dean being caught up at the window when the Vic burned down. And we was all here till midnight and there was flames going up and Tish was screaming. But anyway, there's a bench over there that you might remember. It holds a lot of good memories for me. This is the bench in the square. It's seen loads of action. Mostly from me and Ricky, actually. <laughs> this is the bench on my first day on EastEnders when I was 15 years old, nearly 20 years ago. That Ricky had seen me walking down Bridge Street and banged into the lampposts and stuff. And I came and sat in here, and he came and sat next to me and tried to talk to me. He was all shy. Hi. See, there's, there's a cafe just up there. You can get a drink or something. Yeah, I saw it. So I might be in there later myself. I'm not pleased for you. And he'd left his washing outside, just outside the square. And he was chatting away to me and he forgot about his washing. And some kids nicked it and ran up off the road with it. And then as the years went on, we've come back to this bench. And even when Sam was with David Wicks... I'm freezing, Ricky. She was out on this bench again, snogging Ricky. So I think there's always been a bit of an attraction with Ricky. This is number 23, Albert Square. And this is the first place that Ricky and I lived on our own as adults. And it was a squat, actually, and we shared it with Mark Fowler and Mandy and Aidan. Right. We had our first wedding anniversary here, and Sam was then modelling, as she is always trying to be a model. Stay there. And poor old Ricky remembered the anniversary, which is so unusual for men, but he did. And he went off and done a whole treasure hunt for Sam with little presents and little notes and little love notes. There was a locket in the bush that he'd got for her anniversary present. So he tried really hard and she was just as horrible as ever. Oh, Ricky. 
And then while we were living here, he bought her a puppy. Oh, Ricky, she's gorgeous. Hey. Where'd you get him? Some bloke in the pub. He had one of the fiver. And I don't know whatever happened to the puppy. I think we had to give it away because we couldn't keep it because in the end the bailiffs came. Excuse me! Oh, pass, please! And we all got evicted and all our mattresses and clothes all over the square. And that was the end of us living anywhere together. We've never really had any other home that was our own. So, and I think Sam got a bit bored of that in the end. He wasn't quite enough. So, Sam's been backwards and forwards to the square more times than most people have. But where's she going to live this time? Well, everything comes back to the vic at the end of the day. So she's going to move in with her mum, isn't she? I'm sweet, I'm mate. Back in the early 90s, as love blossomed between Ricky and Sam, these tender teens won over the nation's heart. Ah. Sam and Ricky is classic first love. You know, it's that first love and it never dies. You do love me, didn't you? No, I do. We just fell in love with them instantly. It was two school kids, really, falling in love. I don't think this is sordid or anything, do you? No. Why do you? No, it's just I want it to be special. I mean, you're supposed to remember the first time all your life, aren't you? I hope so. They were young, they were 16, and they were ready to conquer the world. What do you feel like for you? <sighs> well, I can't really put it into words. Brilliant. What about you? Yeah, great. Do you think we could get a pizza? We just wanted to be together. We were smitten. And our whole relationship from the start was doomed because we had two nasty big brothers who, uh, you know, were protective over their little sister. You daft sod, you nearly scared Don't me to death. Don't daft sod me. What are you doing here, my little sister? Oh, leave him alone, Grant. Leave it out, will you? Grant. You lying little git. Look, nothing's happened. <laughs> Telling you, nothing's happened. So that's why we had to run off and get married in Gretna Green. Quick, Sam, come on. For people to realise that actually we were in love. Right. Yeah. Mm. Quick, get going. Yeah. Take a look at this. Oh my God! But these are directions to exactly Gretna Green. Gretna Green. I remember this so It was this farcical car chase across the country. Um, they're 16 years old. They're racing to get to the, the registry office. They're racing to get married. Everyone's against them. It's will the families catch up with them? Will they be able to stop them? Will they be able to get there and say, I do? Which way would they go? That way. Let's get out of here. Come on, get in the van. It was this great chase with, with Pat and, and, and Frank were after them. That's it, damn it! Phil were after them. Who would get there first and would they get married in time or would they not? Would you think I can have some fix in that thing, you know? You hurry up, we'll be late. Got the straight yeah, 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 yeah. The comedy of the Mitchell brothers bursting into the church to stop them. Oh. Meanwhile, miles away, the pair of them are finally saying I do in front of a quite tearful Pat and Frank, who secretly I think were quite touched by the, the young romance of the whole thing. Pull it in, that little old lady's up the street. You ain't got no idea, have you? Hey? If anybody's going to be your witness, I am. So they finally get that. But that shirt that Ricky had on for the wedding, though, it was hideous. I would have stopped the wedding, too. Terrible. Sam wasn't possibly a great wife. Um, you know, she wasn't Nigella Lawson. You know, she didn't have these lovely meals she made. She couldn't cook for toffee, for a start. I told you I've never even done one of these before. Yeah, well, I like it well done. Well done, that's been flaming cremated, that is. I'm sure it was bigger than that when we put it in. I don't think Ricky got a square meal throughout that entire marriage. What is it? We're liver and onions. All oh, right. You're not eating? No, I'm not hungry. I think it's a bit overdone, though. Yeah, um, I think I'll have a bit of toast or something. Yeah, well, we haven't got any bread. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not hungry anyway. I do remember a, a early modelling days, and it was like, oh, oh great, I'm, a, I'm like, Rick is all enthusiastic for her. I go along, and she's out giving cheese away or something, but, you know, dressed up as a big block. I'll try a bit. All right, Sam. <laughs> Ricky, you promised me. And I'm still proud of her, as Ricky would be. Oh, I've just had a thought. Well, if I dress up as a nick, we'd make a beautiful omelette together. <laughs> 
But of course this is EastEnders, and it wasn't long before love's young dream turned into a nightmare. The main problem with Sam and Ricky was that Ricky wanted a nice, quiet, lovely life. You know, he's, bless Ricky, he doesn't really want much. What? Oh. My dinner's getting cold. I feel like a leper or something. Sam began to see other things she wanted to do. I mean, she wanted to be a model and made moves towards that, and that kind of drove a real wedge between them. Sam was always completely blinkered, and that's why it was never going to work. She, she'd just forget all about the husband. She'd always want to aspire after this other life. Hi, Clive, it's me. Look, I need to see you. No, not tonight, now. I need to see you now. As soon as anyone came along with a bit of cash and a bit of a promise of a lifestyle that she wanted, then Sam's head was going to be turned, and turned it was by the sleazy Clive. Go ahead and buy yourself something nice. £50. A nice bottle of perfume. Get rid of the stench of oil and grease and ricky. Clive would take her out, you know, and give her, you know, high-class food and lovely champagne and everything, and Ricky was more like a pie and chips and a half a light owl type fella. And it was never, ever going to be enough for her. Clive. Yes, my sweet. I love you. <laughs> I know you do, darling. And I love you too. Do you? Of course I do. How could I not love something as sweet and adorable as you? Sam thought she was on something great, and then I think there was some unfortunate scene where he tried to lure into a threesome, and she sort of realised that maybe it wasn't right. So is she going to sleep in here? No, I am not. But there's only one bed. Yeah, but it's a king size, darling. There's plenty of room for everyone. That was great. Um, but, I mean, we couldn't do that now. If I went into Deirdre and went, right, I've got a brilliant threesome story with Sam, he'd say no. But then they could get away with it. But even, even Sam Mitchell said no to the threesome, which, is, which kind of shows she's got a tiny, tiny little bit of morality hidden away. <laughs> that was the catalyst for Sam to realise that really her life in Walford and her life with Ricky was going to end. Ricky wants that security, and I think Sam does too, deep down. But at that age, she's still a wild child. She still thinks life can offer something better. She was bound to go. Sam! Sam! How many times do I have to tell you, Ricky? It's over! We're finished! We can't be finished! We're married! I love you, Sam! But I don't love you! I can't but stand you! are my wife! Go away and never come back! I don't want to see you again! Get rid of him now or I'm going to call the police! Sam! Poor old Ricky left bereft, broken-hearted at the age of 18, whoever he was at the time, bless him. But luckily enough, there was a ginger hair bent just around the corner ready to kind of, kind of come and lift him up a bit. <laughs> By now, Daniela Westbrook was a household name, appearing in so many magazines, TV shows and photo shoots that her work was cut out on both sides of the camera. The wonderful thing about Ricky and Sam in their heyday was that they gave the show a bit of glamour. They were the hottest couple on TV. Of course, they're an instant draw for people. You want to watch them, you want to learn about them, you want to read about them. Daniela Westbrook, welcome to Going Live. I remember Stephen and Ross knocking on my dressing room door and saying to me, look, within six weeks your life's going to change, you know. People are going to be looking at you and you're going to be on covers of magazines, things are going to be different and, you know, you really need to think about that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I thought I knew it all, but they were so right and literally my first episode went out and within a week it was just crazy. Back then, when there wasn't a huge range of, of young, pretty people that there are now, there wasn't half a dozen nice, pretty young people in Coronation Street. Line one, who's on one? So the attention was huge, and that pressure is absolutely enormous. Mm, Pat. They dressed us up in all sorts of funny things and, you know, sent us out there to do photo calls and shoots, and we got to present Top of the Pops together. Do you remember that dodgy record from Billy Ray Cyrus? The achy, breaky heart. With a dodgy dance like this. We just threw ourselves into it. At 15 or 16, you're invincible, and you think you could do any, anything they throw at you. Pop, 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 you love. Daniela returned as Sam in 1995, but not before an East End entourage had some good old fun in the sun. Oh, it lovely. I don't know about you, lads, but I thought we'd go for a little explore around. Yeah, definitely. All this year I'm 
Filming in Spain, you know, it's great. We felt, felt like we were movie stars. But we uh, enjoyed ourselves a bit too much outside of work. And I think it shows now. <laughs> it was somewhere like Fengarola. And it was fun. We had a great time. It's like going on a school trip. That was brilliant. And I think that they need to take us to Spain again. <laughs> Sam's return, um, Sam episode two, was um, was one of those strange soap coincidences that don't really happen in real life. Sam! We catch up with her and this amazing life in Spain that she'd left for hasn't quite gone according to plan. You must be doing really well to be working over here. Yeah, I'll get by. I just spoke him to Lorenzo. He said he might have something for you next week. I'll keep on at him, don't worry. It's going to be bar work. It's better than nothing, eh? Right. Sam's modelling career has gone so well that she's now working as sort of hostess in a kind of slightly seedy bar. Um, there she meets David Wicks, who she's never met before, um, and they get on very well. I was married once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Seems like ages ago now. Only lasted a couple of years. The next thing we know, David Wicks and Sam are back in bed at the apartment everyone's staying in. The door busts open and it all kicks off. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Who are they? Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were in here, mate. David, get them get out. out Steve. Yeah, I don't want any funny business. Oh, David. What's going on? Sam. Ricky. They found me in bed with David, which is obviously Bianca's dad. And I was obviously Ricky's ex wife. Ricky, who is she? Never mind who I am. Who the hell are you? What the hell's going on here? It's just this lovely moment as everyone sort of looked round and it was like, what are you doing with them? Once back in Albert Square, the scene was set for some classic East End aggro. Between the two loves of Ricky's life, Bianca and Sam. They did attempt one night to put the past behind them and just be grown up, but I think it lasted about five minutes. Do you like my jacket? Yes, it's very nice, darling. You bought it for me, remember? Did I? Yeah, remember when me, you and Tiffany went out shopping? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. I thought you didn't like yellow. Well, don't mind. You never liked it on me, you said it looked high. No, I didn't. It's gold. It's not yellow. And he loves it, didn't you? Before they've even got from the prawn cocktail to the beef bourguignon or whatever, you know, it's, it's, there's a slang and match going on. So, do you think you two will get married then? Um, well, we uh, might do, yeah, why? No, I'm nothing. I just thought if you did, that'd make you my stepmother, wouldn't it? The way they dealt with it as characters was to always try and pretend it was all right with grown-ups, but underneath there was this cauldron of jealousy and spite and one-upmanship. Do you know what, Ricky? She's just what I thought you'd end up with. Little you can't talk to her like that. But Ricky, look her, he's true. She is not a tart. And you've got no right to say that. Whose side are you on? I'm not on any side. I just won't have you talking about her like that, Sam. So it's all right, everyone can sit here and have a go at me, can they? Yeah. Well, that's what you get, innit, for being a poisonous little bitch. Good old Sam just couldn't keep her hands off that, Ricky. Which didn't go down well with Bianca either. And Sam didn't stop there. Oh, no. As she then made a move on Bianca's new squeeze. Hola. Hola. Que tal? Oh, I knew you were Spanish. I mean, only Spanish blokes wear nice clothes, didn't they? This time, the, uh, the temptation comes in the form of the rather ravishing Guillermo. Sounds like a chap who can take you off some very nice foreign climbs. We'd met Guillermo because um, he knew Tiffany, who at that point was Bianca's best mate. So Bianca, because she was over Ricky by that point momentarily, thought that... that she could have a crack, basically. Stop trying to muscle in on my blood. I weren't actually we were having a conversation. Oh, and the rest. You're pathetic, Sam. Do you know that? You can't get your own blood, so you have to nick mine. It's a good, proper blast before Sam just, just goes off and away. You know, one, one last little cat fight, which is what we all want. Bianca, stop it. Here, everyone, listen. Tarts say again, come and have a look. Oh, that's enough from you. Don't you dare pick on my daughter. Sam's the one who's in the wrong. She's innocent. What are you? Well, I tell you about her. Are you listening to me? 
So rather than face more fights with Bianca, Sam returned to sunny Spain. But behind the scenes, Daniela was starting to struggle with life outside the square. She will be all right this time, won't she? 20, 25 years ago, um, you know, EastEnders was, um, continues to be massive, but it was so massive in those days. 20, 25 million people watching the show. The EastEnders cast, particularly the young cast, were much, much more in the spotlight than they are now. Fame is difficult to deal with at any age, but I think when you're 15, 16 years old, you have no concept of how to deal with it. If you're young, um, pretty and gorgeous like, you know, Daniela was when she was 16, there is a huge appetite for stories about you. And if the papers get wind of something, they consume it, and the public consumes it as well, because it's almost like they now have two soaps to, to follow. And Daniela was a prime example of that, because was everything's happened to Sam, and there was also all the stuff Daniela was going through in her personal life that was being documented day after day in the paper. So the public got, you know, two for the price of one, basically. When I look back at the last two attempts of me coming back to Eastern, it's both times I was very ill and was really the wrong thing to do. And, you know, you make your choices at the time, and I made my choice to come back, and the show brought me back. Um, and I think it was a wrong decision on everybody's account, but we've done it, and it's in the can, and, you know, you move on from that. But at the same time, I think it showed, if you see any of that stuff, you could see in my eyes, I'm actually not really there. I'm very, very ill. Um, and it showed in my work. Phil? Oh, sis, how's it going? Not great. I'm leaving. Well, you going back to Spain? No. I'm going to move in with my mate in North London. She's a temper I met, but she's a good laugh, and it's what I need at the moment. Oh, look, if you need anything, you know where I am. Cheers. I wasn't ready to stop. I knew that I was I had a problem. I knew that I had an addiction problem. I also knew that I was being paid to do a job that I quite clearly couldn't do, um, you know, but tried to do to the best of my ability in the state that I was in. I became exec producer of EastEnders two weeks after Daniela's big tabloid expose in 2000, and it was clear that we couldn't keep her in the programme at that stage. It was one of the first decisions I had to make, was whether we continue with her or don't. And I, in the end, I, d I didn't think it was fair on her, apart from anything else. I bought into the press as much as the next person. I do, I'm a true believer that if you open your, your life up to magazine articles and selling your soul to newspapers, then you know what, when you hit the bad times, you reap what you sow. You can't suddenly turn around and say, no, I want my privacy, don't knock on my front door, don't follow me, don't do this, don't do that. I've, I deserved everything I got through the press. It wasn't easy, but in a way, in a strange sort of way, it did help me get better. To keep seeing myself in those states is a good reminder of this is actually not a glamorous life. Um, it's not where you want to be, it's not where you started off, and it is a wake-up call. No matter what anyone could have done for me at that point, I wasn't ready. I had to get to the point where I said, OK, I'm powerless and I can't do this anymore and I need help for me to be able to be where I am today. And I'm lucky that I got to that point and pulled back just before I jumped off the edge, really. Those of us who'd been on the show when she was first there felt an enormous affection for her and an enormous sense of wanting to look after her as well. And I think all of us wanted to say, now's your chance to prove people wrong. Now's your chance to come back and say, I beat this. You know, I'm back and I'm in business. I can come back and lay a ghost to rest. Um, and also make amends to EastEnders and to the people that I've worked with in the past. That I was sorry for the, for the bad show that I gave before and for letting people down. Um, and proving that I can, I can move on and I'm an actress and I'm well and I'm clean and sober and I can carry on and do a job. And to see me then and to see me now, it shows a journey of a child that started in a programme at 15 where 
her own personal illness and disease took her away from the work and back in work being very ill and now today where I am and I think it just shows people that you know you don't need lots of money to get well you just need to want to get well and you need to want to put your life right and everybody has that opportunity and that inside them if they want to do it and I was, I'm lucky to be able to come back and, and to get closure on that. While Daniela had time away from EastEnders, Sam remained very much at the heart of the Mitchell family. It was my idea to bring Sam back, but, but recast, because it, I think it was clear at the time that Daniela wasn't really in a state where she was able to return, but we wanted to flesh out that family and have fun with it again. So, you know, we agonized about it for quite a while, and then we took the plunge. Mum? Samantha! In British soaps, you don't get a lot of recasting, particularly one for such a sort of core family as well. It was quite a brave move to make, but I think it sort of worked because there was a very conscious thing there to take this Sam in a different direction. Hey, well, this is my sister, so don't even think about it. I'll get it back. Hello, boys. She was a slightly different character, but I think that almost worked better than, than trying to be a sort of clone to the, the sort of Daniela Sam. The first time in my life, I feel like a proper grown-up. So from now on, I'm going to do things my way. She was never really allowed to come out of the shadows of her two elder brothers and very strong mother until the two brothers had left the square. And then Sam sort of had to take over the role of running the family business. And poor Sam, she didn't do a brilliant job of it. This is not enough. I'm sorry, but that's all I could get in the... Stop what we agreed! OK, fine. It's worth a try. I'll take it. What? I said I'll take it. She felt that she wanted to get a bit of respectability. But sadly, um, as soon as Den sniffs a, a, a weak spot, he's, he moves in on it. I don't think so. Dirty Dan. He seduced her and then he robbed her blind of everything. And uh, she ended up selling the Vic at a rock-bottom price, believing that she was getting her brothers out of trouble. Basically, when the Mitchell brothers aren't around to protect her, that girl is lousy in the boardroom. But things went from bad to worse. When Sam and a fellow wronged women of Walford tried to take revenge on Den, only for him to fall foul of a deadly doggy doorstop. Well, this should be really interesting. I think Chrissy probably would have got away with it were it not for Sam Mitchell. Sam Mitchell held the key card, which is she saw Chrissy murder him. <laughs> And she is the undoing for Chrissy because she's not controllable. She suddenly realizes her own power. And she goes a little bit mad as well. Gotcha. Although Sam got arrested for the murder of Den, she managed to tell Sharon basically what Chrissy's last words were to Den, which was, I might not be the first woman in your life, Den, but I'll certainly be the last, whack. Um, and Chrissy alluded to something similar around the same time to Sharon, and Sharon finally, fine, it's never been the brightest Sharon, put two and two together and realised that Chrissy was the one who'd killed Den and not Sam, and that was the kind of beginning of the undoing. OK, Chrissy's gone down for murder, but Sam would still be there for perverting the course of justice, which is four years. Her short spell um, behind bars that she's held already, she knows she could never cope with prison life, and the Mitchells know this, which is why they had her spirited out of the country. Sam basically did what all good Mitchells do when the heat gets too hot. They just go away. You take it and go. The flight leaves tonight. It's your only way out. Black cab, fake passport, off to Rio, never to be seen again. Well, actually, until, you know, 2009. While Sam was on the run to Rio, 
Deep in the Australian jungle, Daniela was showing the world that she had turned a corner and ready to begin a new chapter in her life. I went in to prove a point that I was well and I was okay and then I got in there and I thought, what the hell am I doing here? I can't speak to my kids. Going to the loo in a hole in the grounds, getting my nails absolutely filthy dirty and eating worms. What the hell was I thinking? I thought, you know what, I could be at home. <laughs> so I just walked out. It was part of a fight back. She was looking great. She'd clearly beaten the addictions. Obviously, there's still this vulnerability and fragility about her. She found the jungle conditions very difficult, but at least it showed that she had actually started to beat the sort of demons that were there, and she was hungry to work again. I got it! Hello? Hello? Oh, at last, I've been trying to get hold of you for a couple of days. We got a surprise for you. Yeah, well, uh, I've got a bit of a surprise for you as well. Oh, what, you got me a present? Uh, no, not exactly, no. Well, you'll see. I think the idea for bringing Sam back came about when we were really trying to think about some obstacles to Ricky and Bianca being together. We said, look, we need someone else to come between them. What's stopping them getting back together? I think the audience want them to be together and I want them to be together. And, you know, Rick and Bianca should be together, but not too soon. So we're all sitting there thinking, what, what are we gonna do? And John York said, well, the one person who's always the third wheel in that relationship, it's Sam. And everyone went, oh, oh yes. And then he went, and it's Daniela Westbrook. And everyone went, oh, okay. And most of the time when I come up with ideas, you know, like, and the old timer in the room, they go, shut up, granddad. You know, but, but this time everyone went, ooh. When you get those moments in those story meetings, that's when you know that something's gonna be right. And then suddenly that just seemed so clear because it opened up so many opportunities and got the Mitchells involved. And from there to getting her back really wasn't that long. We were a little bit worried at first. We did think, hold on. Are we sure we're going to do this? Because we had Kim Medcalf in the middle, and no disrespect for Kim Medcalf at all. Kim was terrific as Sam, and I think Daniela was terrific as Sam. But to me, thinking about bringing Sam back again, it's Daniela. It was Daniela that did the scenes with Sid and Patsy 18, 20 years ago. And when I think of the classic material of Spoiled Little Girl, Phil and Grant's little sister, again, it's Daniela. As soon as we started thinking about Daniela and thinking about Sam back on the square, the stories kind of wrote themselves. Sorry, could you just pass me that milk? Because otherwise I'm going to have to meet you. Oh, I crush oh. you there. Oh. Where am I supposed to sit? Oh. Ronnie and Roxy are going, hold on here. We were here first. And Sam's going, actually, I was here first. Actually, so do you, Roxy. And she and Roxy hate each other. When I want your opinion, all right, I will ask for it. Until then, you keep your big fat gob shut. Why everyone else sees him? It's you're the gob that can't be trusted. Phil's sitting there going, oh my God, I'm stuck with all these women. Ben's sitting there going, ooh, does Sam like musical theatre? You've got little Jay going, wow, Sam's got lots of really great underwear. And then, of course, you've got Archie. In, in now. Who, um, Sam was always his favourite niece. What's she saying to think about for the future? Enough said. And we also wanted to build to the moment where Sam and Bianca come together for the first time and you go, God, OK, I've got to keep watching next week. Why are you doing it? Not now, Bianca, We've please. done you a pie at home with streamers and banners and welcome home, Ricky. I've even got you a cake. Oh, now look what you've made me do. Me? <gasps> we just liked the idea of a kind of camp, dynasty-style entrance. Classy as ever. Bianca's there on the floor, humiliated. She looks up and we see Sam revealed in all her glory. Some things never change, do they? It's a great cliffhanger. You want to stick bombs under your characters every now and again. That's where the drama comes from. And the best bomb of all is, is Sam, Daniela as Sam, coming back dressed like that. And this blonde bombshell has a look that deserves to be captured on camera. The shoot today is Daniela's return to EastEnders, so we've got the props that she turns off with, we've got a bit of the Vic background we're going to use. Today's going to be all about the colour and all about the garish side of Sam Mitchell. 
We're just shooting all the pictures for the publicity to go out for the magazines and TV listings. So anyone that calls up that wants a catalogue picture of Sam Mitchell, they can pick out which one they want. It'll be a good laugh today. Hello! Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> How big is that hair? I love it! Right, right, let's get you in position. So you're there, yeah. You look back. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah. Slightly cockier, so it's like chin up a little bit. She looked at it. Yeah, trouble. Nice. Just know you're going to be evil. That's it. Fab. I think what we need from Daniela is everything's to be character, so it's what Sam's going through. And slightly cockier as well again, babe. So we've got to make sure we cover every possible thing that could happen to her in the emotional scales of happy, sad, to angry. Nice. That's so dynasty. Sometimes just very subtle, just in the eyes, and it just gives you just what you need. So she's been really good so far, and we're just hoping to get a bit more from the other outfits. When we went out shopping for the character, I wanted her to be bright. She's coming back from Rio, I wanted her to make a big splash, and she is Peggy's daughter, so I wanted her to be bright and colourful. Fab. In normal life, you wouldn't wear colours like that all the time. She's doing it to make a point, and I think she's making a point quite well. That's it. Lovely. I would never wear Samantha Mitchell's clothes in a million years. Not the bright stuff, anyway, but I would definitely wear near enough every pair of her shoes. That's nice. Yeah, Works yeah good, it's isn't sweet, it? isn't it? Yeah, they're nice. I like them. Well done, babe. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Not everyone is pleased to see Sam back, as while she's been away, Bianca and Ricky have formed a cosy family unit that is now under threat. Well, Sam and Bianca are a classic case of opposites, you know, uh, and they're never going to agree on anything. I mean, partly it's just the way they look, because they look so different from each other. What's up? Lost for words. No, there's a first. Bianca's now a mum, you know, a mum a few times over. Uh, whereas Sam is anything but that. Wait, where are you going? I said I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on then. Uh, another ten minutes ain't gonna work, is it? That really is gonna play on Bianca's insecurities. That's where the character really kicks in. Oh. And it's a relationship with Ricky that's at stake. Oh, who's giving that? <laughs> We're cleaning him up for me, we are. Who? Morgan, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be so nice to come home to. You'd Where's the patient? So nice. <laughs> Our little boat. Ain't nothing gonna sink it. No, we're like the You'd Titanic, aren't we? So <laughs> nice. You'd be paradise. One more night, and I want some pillars between us. Right. Put some pants on, yeah. Rick and Bianca's current family setup. It's a very sort of 21st century sort of family. There's, there's kids all over the place. Ricky's been supporting her, been like a dad to all her kids, and has been this fantastic man and this friend throughout all of this. All I've been trying to do for the last year is, you know, is try and win her back. I love you. I'm sure she just kind of appreciated him being around, but I don't think she's had much time to, to kind of look at it and think, actually, this could really work between us. You'd be so, so nice. You'd be paradise to come home to and love. Years ago, when she left Ricky at the train station, he said to her, am, am I ever going to be enough for you? That's what I needed to know. Which is one of the most upsetting things ever. And we wanted to kind of redress the balance that Bianca realises that, yeah, he's more than enough for her. Anyone would be lucky to have such a lovely man like Ricky. Don't you and Ricky ever snuggle up, you know, for old times' sake? Ricky? No, why would I? I mean, you've got a shared history. It must count for something. Mm. Seems like a lifetime ago. We're different people now. We played this nice episode in August where three generally unrelated characters, Dot and Bianca and Ronnie, all have a long dark night of the soul where they all realise that they have to do something. If anybody is aware of time, it's us. It's people your age who forget. 
I mean, you sit around agonizing over what you've done, what people think of you, what you're going to do next, and all the while, time is ticking away. And it goes so fast. And the older you get, the faster it goes. You want to grab hold of it, make the most of it, before it's too late. Bianca suddenly realises that she loves him. And she does this kind of, you know, she has this moment where she goes, it's Ricky. It's Ricky. I love Ricky. <laughs> she runs out to go and find him. I threw away the best thing that's ever happened to me. Ricky. I, I thought you said that it's only ever been Ricky. But it's too late, because Ricky's off on a plane, as we later learn, to Rio. It's a classic EastEnders trick, isn't it, really? You know, you, 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 you create an expectation of happiness for a character and then you blow it out of the water at the last minute. No, I can't rub out all that past. Yeah, but well, she made your life a misery for years, remember? Yeah, and I forgive her. Which just goes to prove it, really. Prove what? Well, I... I think I'm still in love with her. To me, there's a kind of destiny to Ricky and Bianca, and uh, I think Sam is in danger of uh, messing that destiny up. Now, I know it was a bit of a shock for some of you about Sam coming home, but I think this is a surprise that's going to make you all happy. We're engaged. When Ronnie and Roxy hear about the engagement, we just think, yeah, right. I mean, as if, come on. Oh, that's right. Yeah, welcome to the family, again. It's convenient for Sam while she's here. And I think Bianca knows that, that Sam is not going to be with Ricky for the long haul, you know, that she is just using him. Ricky just doesn't seem to see it. I mean, I think all he's seeing at the moment is a, is a pair of bazookas. <laughs> Back in again. Okay, here we go then. And action. When we were storylining it, we knew the audience were expecting a cat fight. So you didn't want to leave it too long. You didn't want to do it in the first episode. There she is, Sam, the ex-wife. Not only Ricky's first love, but she looks really glamorous and she's been to Brazil. Bianca's the second wife. She's got all the kids, and Sam's got no ties, and doesn't have babies and stuff like that. So she feels really dowdy and desperate about it all. And Sam's walked back in, and Ricky's like all over. She would like her to just go away, go back to Rio, leave them alone, and then she would definitely be able to get Ricky. She knows that, but while she's around, no, there's no chance. You know that they don't have any airs and graces. Sam pretends she does, but she doesn't really. And Bianca's a fishwife, she'll get stuck in. If you throw those two together, I mean, the words will be cutting, but then in will come the fists. They're like two dogs you've got to hold up back from each other, so they're going to go and pounce on each other. You needed a ticket home. It's always been me. Even when he was with you, all I've ever had to do is click my fingers. As soon as you put Sam and Bianca in a room, you know they're going to be sparring. And really, it's just a matter of time, you know, before it actually they come to blows. Hope you get me. He still won't, won't you? Because he knows class when he sees me. <laughs> I love these these fight scenes because they really come up with the best sort of one-liners. Class, class. You peroxide chav. Uh, who are you calling a chav? You're an ugly ginger mugler. It's exactly how we would go at each other. Like she would be full on gobby trappy, and Sam would be like, yeah, you know. He's mine, he was mine first. And the more calm she is, the more Bianca gets angry. And then she just says, you know, you're a chap. She's like, I'm mean, what? And then it all kicks off. Everyone loves to watch a great big cat fight. It's nothing better. You so stop this! I like the hair pulling. I like that really undignified, like. <laughs> I love that. Let's have a look for a few Quite a good little buzz around the place, because it's an old cat fight. It's just grabbing air and scratching. It's wrong, but it's exactly what the viewers want to see. Well, the big problem with Sam Mitchell is that she's, she's on the run. 
she says, you know, there's, there's, a, a, there's a warrant out for her arrest. She wants to go and see everybody. She just kind of, you know, like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? And it's because you get nicked, that's why. Most people in that position would be very nice to everyone and not ruffle any feathers. But because she's Sam Mitchell, she can't help getting on everyone's wick. Someone grasped her up. Someone grasped up my daughter. And so the stage is set for someone to make the phone call to the police, tip her off and get her out of the way. The question is, who was it? Roxy doesn't like Sam. She's blonde and pretty, and Roxy doesn't like another pretty blonde Mitchell being in the bit. That's her place. She's the little kid that people get out of trouble, not Sam, and Roxy doesn't like her position being taken. Ronnie could easily call the police just to get Sam out of the way and make everything easier, because the Vic is hers for her and Joel and her sister and Peggy and Phil and Ben. It's all fine, and she doesn't need the hassle. Jay, Jay's seen this hot Mitchell woman in the Vic, thinks, well, hey, I want a piece of her, and she's treating him like a kid. And Jay doesn't think he's a kid. Jay thinks he's 45. And Jay doesn't like anyone rejecting him or telling him what to do. So Jay's another person who could easily do it. Whitney really wants Ricky and Bianca to get together, and suddenly this mouthy Mitchell turns up and is obviously upsetting Bianca. And Whitney, with her own little logic, thinks if Sam's out of the way, everyone's happy. Archie hates the Mitchells. He wants the Mitchells to suffer, he wants them to pay. If Peggy doesn't want him, then right, he can cause as much trouble for her as possible. So if he makes a phone call, Sam is gone, and then Peggy's upset, the Mitchells will have to try and get her out of prison. Fantastic. So Archie could easily make the phone call. Bianca, of course, could have called the police. She hates Sam. She's always hated Sam. She's got Ricky, who Bianca wants, and so near to having, and then suddenly, and Sam turns up, so Bianca could easily have called the police. You're gonna think it's someone and then it's gonna be someone else. That's what I'm gonna say at the moment. And it's going to cause a lot of problems. But it's lovely that it's come full circle for Daniela. It's been lovely enabling that journey, and she's absolutely delivered. I'm thrilled with what she's done. You see Daniela as Sam there in the Vic. She absolutely feels like part of the fabric. It is really lovely all being back on the set together. And when we were in the Vic the other day upstairs, you know, all of us being there, it's a really nice moment. It's like Friends Reunited or something, you know. It's like having a reunion. It does feel like that. I felt a really good energy with, you know, with all of us. It doesn't seem that 10 years has gone. It just, you know, it just sort of seems like yesterday. I know it's a typical sort of cliche, but, yeah, it just seems right. There's so much history between us, and we've done so much work together over the years. You might not see somebody for eight or nine years, but you walk back onto set and you just pick up where you left off. Sam's a great character, and Danny's a great character. And uh, I think her first day back or whatever, she went, hello, Pearl, and I'm like, hello, Dan. And she said, oh, she went, oh, I'm, I'm terrified about tomorrow, you know. And I said, why? And she said, well, I've got to do all this stuff where I'm dancing on the table and all that sort of thing. I was so nervous about doing that scene of dancing on the bar. Obviously, we're still being nearly nine years clean and sober. You know, you'd never, A, catch me dancing anywhere <laughs> or on a bar I was like oh Perry I'm so embarrassed I'm just dying inside I just went of course you can you know you can do all that so anyway we got to doing the stuff on the day and we just said well, just go for it just go for it it's just us it's just your mates here watching and stuff I got up there and I did it and I was looking at him as I was dancing and he was going hey, like cheering me on and it was nice Perry just gave me maybe even without realizing it the, the boost that I needed at that point and that's the great thing about working there. You're working with some really good, genuine people that just give each other a bit of support as and when they need it. So after Sam Mitchell's dramatic return to Walford, how does it feel to have Daniela back on a series? She began almost 20 years ago. It's a great story in many ways. It's a redemption story. 
think, you know, hopefully through this, she's found some kind of redemption and validation for creating a, the extraordinary character she did when she was very, very young. You know, she was great casting then, and she is now. She's fantastic, and I just think she's come back in. She should be so proud of herself, you know, it can't be easy. For somebody to, to have gone through what Daniela did and come right out the other side, and to do it on a show like EastEnders is, is phenomenal. You know, my hat's off to her. Honey, it's been a long time coming And I can't stop now And I can't stop smiling And I won't look down I think she's done brilliantly to come back and show that just because you can go through dark periods, there's nothing to say you can't come out the other side, and she's well and truly come out the other side. So it is a, it is a massive success story for her and for us to have her. You know. And then I looked up at the sun and saw the sky And the way that gravity pulls on you and I On you and I so I'm very thrilled and uh, I'm glad she's back because she's my mate. I'd have thought the other day when I was driving home in the car thinking, God, I'm so tired, I'm so tired, I'm so tired. And I thought, I'm really lucky as well because I got given this opportunity at 15. I've been on lots of journeys in my life from then on. And here I am back in and I just think, I am lucky, and I'm lucky to be playing Sam Mitchell again, because it is my character, it's something that I, I brought to the screen with the opportunity of EastEnders, and it's me that will get to put the, the finishing touches to her, if you like, and I, I am proud of that. I'm really proud of it. So from one brassy blonde to a host of gorgeous girls hoping to prove beauty can also mean brains as they take on a host of quirky tasks against a team of boffins in Clever vs Stupid. Are these tears of joy or despair? Meet their wedding planners. This is going to be a doddle. I can't imagine getting married without a veil. She ain't having a veil. I like everything modern. She'll love it. I do want a traditional Scottish wedding. <sighs> if I don't like it, I'm not wearing it. You're just ruining the She's not impressed. Find out if these grooms make their brides cry for all the right reasons. Don't tell the bride. Tuesday at 9 on BBC Three. Miss the last one? Catch up now on BBC iPlayer. Next up on BBC Three, Danny hasn't even got time to open a cold.